Hello and welcome to The Lawful Remedy with the Clever Clogs. I'm Richard Vobes and with me to help me through this is... Karen Dodd. Hello Karen. Hello Richard. Um, we are in my little studio here, ready to go live with you. We haven't done this before, so expect all sorts of <laughs> errors and complications. Uh, but we are very much looking forward to it. I think I'm glowing red already with, with the excitement. Antis- yeah, with the anticipation. Absolutely. Of it. I don't know why. Um, Karen is here to go through the chat, and uh, she is here so that she can sort out all the questions that you might have for our wonderful panellists. Now, talking of the panellists, shall we go to Karen and find out who they are? Yes, indeed. Thank you, Richard. So this evening on our panel, we have three wonderful guys and we have Sook Singh, who has been at the forefront of this uh, this well, new paradigm, I guess, this transition that we're going through. And then we have Dean of Buxton. Uh, who... If Dean says something, he'll come up on the screen. Yeah, De- yeah Dean, I think... How are, you? are you there, Dean? Yeah. So, 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 yeah, there, there you go, Dean. Thank you. So Dean's sort of in his car because you're pretty off-grid and you don't always get uh, Wi-Fi, do you? So you've, you've gone to your car and hopefully we'll have a good connection through the evening. And then we also have Pete the Hat in Kent. Uh, Where's Pete? Does Pete uh, need to say anything? Uh, only if you want me on the screen, apparently. Yes, yeah, we, there yeah, we go. so that people can see you. So these are our lovely three gents for this evening. And if this is a success, which I'm sure it will be, it might be... Uh, it'll be fun if, if nothing else. Then we're going to continue this for the next uh, following three weeks to try and help people. So I think we're going to start off, are we not, um, with Sing, with Sing, with Sook Sing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Sook. I'm only used to calling what? him Sook. Um, I thought you were asking Sook. me to sing. Oh, you can sing. Come on, sing. Start us <laughs> off with a song. Sook's no, going to sing a song. You wanted it to be a successful <laughs> show, so we'll avoid that. Okay, we'll avoid this. So, so yeah. what do we ask? It's, we, we can talk about the how people might answer the questions because I think mm. what we've um, just talking before we started is that there are different approaches to... Um, hello, uh, oh, hello. Welcome <laughs> to the... We've just started our own <laughs> feedback. I think that's on your screen. Oh. Uh, anyway, never mind that. That's I told really... you. <laughs> it's coming out of your loudspeaker. So right. there might be a delay here to... Anyway, don't right, worry about I've, that. I've muted it. Brilliant. Mm. So um, over to you, um, Sook. H- how are you going to answer some of the questions that we, we are getting in? Uh, good evening, Richard. Everybody, hope you're well. So, I mean, from my perspective, this is around sovereignty and the law. So the first thing we have to do is understand sovereignty and the law and what they are as a concept from the creator and whatever creative force people believe put us here. Uh, whether that's nature or God or the force from Star Wars. Um, it doesn't really matter at this point what that is to you. There is an, an infinite creative force that has ultimately put us here. And through that, we're granted a conscience. And that is ultimately our guide to f- having free will. And our free will is determined into two parts. We control our internal drivers, the intent that we have. And we control the external drivers, which is the consent that we give. And these are the two levers, essentially, to our conscience, those things we choose to do and those things we choose to have done to us or we choose to participate in. And the law is really supposed to be around the conscience. It's not supposed to be around uh, a static rule set. It's supposed to be us operating as almost co-creators to whatever infinite energy or God or nature or whatever you believe puts it. And it's how we start to express and manifest that in this material world. So walking around the streets, talking to each other, buying stuff, trading, whatever it is, we have to operate from our conscience. And the law is there really is something as man starts to express themselves. The unwritten rule set is natural law. Um, for me, it's the highest, some people call it divine law, universal law. Um, and then over time, people have started to write that down into different ancient scripts, the Torah, the Quran, the Gospels, the British Constitution. And in England, that in written format gets known as a common law. Um, and that is ultimately the law of the land. So when I'm looking at answering these questions, that's the, the sort of wider context that I believe that myself and the others on the panel, and they'll obviously give you um, their viewpoint. Um, It's not so much the approach you're using, but 
the energy which you bring, understanding that there is no authority between you and the creator, that you are sovereign. There's no DVLA or policeman or prime minister. There's you and your conscience and then the infinite creation. And so that's the power that you have to be able to try and embrace. And that's what most people that are struggling are struggling with that. We've been so conditioned into answering our names to registers and letters that come through the door. Um, we've almost come sub subservient in our obedience to it. And so people are struggling with breaking that connection a little bit, although it's becoming easier as the government and establishment start to show their incompetency, possible deliberate incompetency, and the pain that they're inflicting. But I'll, I'll be sort of be looking at it from that perspective and then from there getting into the technical aspects. But for me, the spirit that you carry and the energy is the most important part of it. Brilliant. And that's what the law ultimately is, how we manifest that in the way we live. Thank you so much. Does uh, any of the other panellists want to um, talk about how they will approach some of the questions? We're getting questions coming in. And just uh, on that, just whilst we're talking about that, it, I've noticed some people are putting in capital letters, and I know capital letters is a thing, um, but it gets our attention. If you put the word question and then your question, um, that would be uh, that would be very helpful. I'm pressing all the wrong mm. buttons here. Look at this. <laughs> doing all right, Richard. I'm doing all right. Um, I, I'm having to be in the gallery as well as sort of try and be <laughs> coherent I'm here. I'm so if you write in capital letters uh, your question and then put your question, it helps um, Karen, who is dutifully here, scanning through to get the questions out as well as you uh, doing mm. all your chat. So um, go back to the other question. Then was um, who who would like to? Um, what about uh, Pete the Hat? How how are you going to answer the questions? Uh, very very much in the same way. Sook and I are pretty much on the same page with regard to it's an inside job. You see, it's not about what's out there. It's about what's in here. So the first thing you have to get rid of is fear, because all of the external things that are happening to you that you think we have to comply with generally happen because you're in fear of something else happening as a consequence of you not taking action. So you take the action that you feel you have to take in order to avert anything that's being, well, you're being threatened with. Mm. Um, whereas if you are um, conscious, if you like, on the inside that if you're doing no harm, then no harm will come to you. Then you don't have to be a f in fear. And so right. it's, it's, it's about knowing where you stand uh, as an entity, if you will, in, in your own consciousness um, and trusting to something greater than yourself, no matter what you call that infinite intelligence, God, the divine. Um, my own experiences of having that operate within my life and recognizing it, and there are many others who have done so. And once you've done that and you know that it exists as something that can occur, then the fear goes away because you, what you give is what you get, very literally. So you may have all the particular ways of addressing issues through notice, through different uh, um, pieces of paper, shall we say, um, but if you don't know in yourself that you're sovereign, that you don't have to comply, that what you're doing is causing no harm and therefore you're not committing any kind of offence against anybody or anything, um, then you're probably going to be unsuccessful because as soon as you find yourself being challenged, you won't have that base to work from where you know that you, you're safe and that mm. you, you know your, 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 uh, your job is to work with the creator and, and, and nothing else. Right. OK. Uh, what about you, Dean? Yeah, hi everybody. Um, well, I, I see it as though I, I'm a simple man and I try to simplify things to the most simplest level, um, you know, for everybody else. It, it's basically, so I would try and answer questions as simply as possible. And that's about it. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Nice and succinct, mm. which is uh, which is what we like. So, Karen, have yeah. we got any questions coming yeah, in? Yeah, I think this is a really good one. Somebody said, why can't these law guides, guys, the panel, get together and, and you know, kind of sort things out and be crowdfunded? And I think when we set this up as the Lawful Remedy or the Clever Clogs or whatever, that kind of was my idea as a, as a suggestion. But it's not as easy as that. When you start speaking to these guys, it's not as easy as that. As I just said, it's mm. not just about filling in a form and sending it off, is it? It's no. much deeper. It's much deeper. So I don't know if one of the one of the panel want to want to address that. Anybody? Just repeat the question for so us. So why can't these law guys get together? And where is it? Literally, who's this coming from? Um, 
She's probably gone miles it's, yeah, it's, the screen yeah, by now. Yeah, That's probably, it, yes. Yeah. Oh, here it's why, why can't these law guys get together and do a test case? We could crowdfund their fees. That's from now to see here. <laughs> so what do you think? Um, is there a reason why a lot of these law people can't get together and... and it almost form a organization of yeah, some sort. Yeah, a, a sovereign organization mm. of lawful. Yeah, shall people. I answer that? Yeah, please do, Dean. Um, so, with regards to what do you mean by a test case, so I'll, I'll just keep it quite broad, is that obviously I've been through my own case. So, you have to be mindful that we are dealing with a fluid system that has been fine-tuned over many hundreds towards thousands of years. So this system has been fine-tuned. So if it was as simple as I'm going to fill out this one form and everything will be rosy, people are under another illusion that that's how the world works. It, it isn't how the world works. We must um, be able to stand up for what we believe in and that doesn't come on one form but with regards to people getting together I believe this is a, a step towards people getting together uh, and like Karen said it was her idea and this is going to run for a few weeks so we are coming together right oh good well that sounds positive <laughs> that's that's right job done we, we can go home now <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> thanks very much Dean um, should we take a, a, unless anybody else has got a specific, um, uh, put your hand up, by the way, to the panel, because you're actually on the side here, so I can look at your windows if you, if you specifically want to answer. Oh, Sook, let's go to Sook. You're muted at the moment. Sook, you're, you're, mu you're yeah. muted. There we go. Yeah, sure. So, um, the, one of the other reasons, to be honest, is that the, the, the law, or us law guys, one of the things we're trying to protect is that this is about sovereignty. This is about individuals understanding and knowing their rights. That's the journey that this period of this age is taking us through. People, there isn't a template. There isn't anyone else that can do it for you. The system, like they say, is fine-tuned in such a way that it will sniff out your fear and that's where it will target you. You know, the three of us, and, and, and there's lots more than just the three of us. There's like there's loads of people out there now that are really good people that you'll see on this panel. Uh, and we are all working together loosely so that we're not all in one room for them to come and take us out. We are all working together because we're all working from our conscience and we're all working towards self-determination and sovereignty. But we can't do it for you in the same way that Christ couldn't save you for you. Right. You have to give you the messages you, and the lessons, and then you have to take that path. Do you think um, one of the problems is that people um, just want an easy route? I mean, it just seems, you know, because like, yeah. we've been so used to going to a solicitor and saying, oh, yeah, deal with this problem, yeah. and, and they go off, and we don't really know what they do. And they either do or they don't, or they uh, may have a yeah. bit of shenanigans in yeah. between. Um, would you say that's that's the problem? We we've just like so much. We've we've given control to other people. Yes, definitely. I think Pete Pete has a really good view on this. Actually, Pete, do you want to comment on this? If people don't think they have a choice. They they, they don't see an alternative. Right. And that's, that's been the past paradigm. I think now what we have is a situation where people are beginning to realise there are alternatives to using a solicitor to using those bailiffs and understanding what the laws actually are and how they are um, created, if you like, and, and the difference between lawful and legal, which is which is, is one of the primary things you have to get. Lawful is a living jurisdiction of England versus legal, which is the dead jurisdiction of the UK or England and Wales. And so once you understand there's a distinction, then you can start going down into more detail and saying, well, why is that? Why do I need a solicitor to write me this or write me that? Why can't I write that myself? Mm. And the answer is, of course, you can. But they don't want you to because then they lose their power. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. All right, brilliant. Thank you so much for that. Um, any more questions? Yeah, we, we've, we've got quite a few questions here. They, they're whizzing up quite quickly. Um, 
so for instance i mean some of them are probably going to be the same answer somebody said it's a personal journey it's, mm. it's it's not a quick fix is it and you've got to do the work the inner work because we we're at war it's a spiritual battle we're at here and i think that's what most people need to understand rather than just filling in forms and and just saying i you know there's a straw man and capital letters is you've really got to go within but for instance if maybe the panel can ask these two questions because I, I don't know the answer but it might be the same answer for both um, do we have to pay for the driving license? And if we don't, what happens to it? And or to happens to us, we don't pay. And are all, all mortgages are they legal? Are, are mortgages legal? So two different questions, but I imagine the answer is going to be it's the same. <laughs> but what so, do I know? Well, let's find out let's from find our out. wonderful panel. Yeah. Who would like to take that? I think uh, Sue has got. Because, uh, Dean, you're quite dark, by the way, so you may have to wave vigorously if you want to talk, because <laughs> on my little screen I can barely see. But I can window, yeah. I can see yeah. Sue. Over to you, sir. Yes, yeah, so, so, the, so yes, mortgages are unlawful, and the, probably the best thing to do there is have a look at the Great British Mortgage Swindle. There's a whole documentary on it rather than take up lots of time on the court, because they go into it beautifully on there. Uh, in terms of driving... The driving like when you say do you have to pay for it i'm not sure whether they mean the documentation of the license itself the question seems a bit wide but i'll try and answer it in terms of you've got an inalienable rights which are bestowed on you by the fact that your blood flows and your flesh lives it's got nothing to do with any documentation mm. and if you are capable and competent to uh, operate a conveyance a car otherwise known in the corporate world as a vehicle um then, and you know you wouldn't cause anyone else any loss, harm or injury through your conscience and you're driving correctly, then no, you don't need a license to drive lawfully. I don't, however, suggest if you rely on your car that you throw your license in the bin and start operating without it. I have done that and I have tested that route. And if you're a taxi driver, for example, you're not going to have many happy customers right. <laughs> because you're going to get stopped a lot. So, you know, what is the truth and what are our rights and us fighting for them versus... Can you just go out there and do it? Um, you know, I think I said before, when you start to take on this fight, there's three things that I really, really insist people consider. Firstly, what is it that you can't afford to lose from mm. a material perspective, from a financial perspective, spiritual perspective, psychological perspective? What you can't afford to lose, get it off the battlefield, put it in a trust, sell it, do whatever you've got to do with it, get it out of the way. So if you genuinely can't afford to lose stuff, the stuff that you're prepared to fight with, that stuff, you then need to think about how you're going to protect it and you have to be prepared to lose it in the fight. So if you've got an E-type Jag, you know, don't change the number of plates on it with something random, perhaps. Get a banger or something. You're, you can, if you can afford to lose the E-type, why not? Do it in style. But, you know, if you can't afford to do it, then, you know, get something you can afford to. Yeah. And, then, you know, these things are really important. A lot of people are going out there to try and get out of paying something or to try and save money. If that's your driving force, you're going to come up with a lot of trouble, to be honest with you, because you have to have the conviction to follow this through. And to some degree, you have to set yourself up psychologically and to some degree materially and how your assets are structured before you take the fight on. Otherwise, you have to call in superheroes like Pete and that. And they start mm -hmm. to get stretched very thin when life gets to this point. Yeah, Br brilliant. Yeah, no, it's, uh, that's very interesting. I like the uh, analogy of the battlefield because it, it really mm. is a battlefield, mm. isn't it? And, yeah, we're at war. And uh, yeah, you send over the troops that you you are disposable. Yeah, <laughs> like they do, did did like in the they, First World War. Yeah, well, like they still do. I think. And, don't they? and they still do. Cannon fodder. And, mm. Yeah. So uh, can can I just go back to the previous question when somebody asked um, about a test case? Mm. They were saying the point was missed because they really want the opportunity to prove that the council tax is unlawful. So what? Would oh right, so get get us lot to yeah to, yeah to well, not us, yeah me, somebody, but, but clever people to make a test case. Uh, and I'm I mean we are seeing those sort of things. We, aren't we, we? With we Leighton are. Leighton and Stuter is is a sort of yes a test case. It's sort of halfway house. Yeah, because it is a numbers game, isn't it? I think the whole lot, if, if a lot of us all came together and, and uh, you know, came on the battlefield at one time, but I don't know how that's, how, how possible, how feasible that is. Yeah, Pete's got his hand up. Yes, um, so the way that uh, I approach it, uh, along with a friend of mine, is that um, I wouldn't advise anybody to go into the court because the court isn't a court, it's a venue. It's the first thing you have to understand. The court is the paperwork because we're under Roman administrative law. It's all administrative law. And for clarification, administrative law means that there's no jury present. Okay. 
So when you go in there and they have the body, habeas corpus, they can just do what they want to you because you're there. You've already uh, accepted liability for the name. We're talking about the name. We kind of haven't really clarified that yet. But in Roman civil administration, your all caps name is called Capitus Diminutio Maxima. It's all caps. It's actually American sign language. And you know that if you go and look at it, there's two uh, ways of discovering this. One is the Oxford Manual of Styles, which doesn't have capitals in it at all. And then you have um, the, uh, the uh, what's the name of it now? It's the other Chicago, Manual of Styles. Right? Chicago, Chicago Manual of Styles. Yes. And in that, it's 111 point something. I, I forget the exact number. But it tells you that all capitals is ASL. It's American Sign Language. So it's a glyph. It's sign language. It's not English. It's called glossa. It's D-based Latin. All right. But it's not mm. English. And on a contract, because what we're looking at when you're sent paperwork is an offer to contract. Right. So these two, uh, this paperwork that you receive with all capitals on it and then lowercase and then capitalized first letter. And that's different languages. When you have more than one language on a page, it's blank. It doesn't mean anything. So there's a deeper depth that you need to get to to understand what's actually happening, what you're getting in the post, what you're reading. So if someone writes to you with an all capitals name, that's mm. not you. And if you accept liability for it, then you take responsibility for that name in commerce because it's a contract that you're being offered. And then you're on their ship, as it were, and you have to follow their rules. So with the car example earlier, do you have to pay for a license? Well, you registered your car with DVLA and you became the registered keeper. You don't own it. You're keeping it. DVLA own it, which means they can take it away from you and they can enforce traffic laws upon you. Right. OK. Um, I had a question then as you were talking and um, the brain. Decided. Your question or somebody? No, well, no, a question in, in on, on the back of what you were saying. Right. But um, in terms of the capital. Like, oh, yeah. The question is that what the people who are writing these letters to you, the, you know, the, the, the front office, as it were, um, presumably they've just been told this is the style that we write them in. They probably don't know. Is that right? Would you say that the people, you know, the, they probably have no idea that they're writing in glossa? I, I, would, I would probably agree with you. Um, but will you give them notice? Because that's how we deal with things. You don't use their forms. You don't use their approach. You give them right. notice. Okay. So your first notice is conditional acceptance or notice to show cause. So you say, okay, well, I conditionally accept. So council tax free is a classic example. So you write to me and say, oh, you need to, because when you get a council tax notice, you get notice. You don't get a bill. You don't get a statement. Mm. They give you a council tax notice. They're giving you notice. Well, you yes. have three days to rebut notice. So you rebut it. Now, the simplest way to do that, when you get that in the post and you recognize that this all capital names is not you, is you get a blue pen because it's commerce. So we use blue. And you scribble out your name and the address because that's not your address. That's not where you live. You live in your body. This is the thing about being sovereign, flesh and blood. Right. That's where you live. This address is a is a is a military uh, occup address. It's like a, that's why they have a postcode. That's your cell number, really. Right. So you scribble all of that out, and you write above false details because it's false. That's not you. And then underneath we write malicious communication because malicious communications act 1998. 1988 states that if you receive poison pen that has anything through the post which is causing you harm, distress or anxiety, that's malicious communication. Then onto the right hand side you write offer to contract not accepted because it's an offer to contract. No consent is given. Then you turn so, it over usually because there's a return address, you recircle the return address and you put it back in the post. And that's so, it. And so let me just ask you this then um, because people will be getting their council tax uh, bills right now for April. And you say three days. Firstly, is that three working days? Because we're now, you know, they, if it arrives on a Friday, uh, is that including Saturday and Sunday? And the second question is, can you do that? What you've just said, uh, I don't wish to con uh, contract with blue ink over that letter. Yeah, you write it on the front of the letter you write, because it's usually a windowed envelope. Yeah. Which again, is unlawful because it's, it's it's internal mail if it's windowed. shouldn't be going through the post in any case. Right, but you, you write false details above the window. You scribble out the name and addresses they've given it. You put malicious communication below to the right hand side on the front of that envelope. You write offer to contract not accepted. Underneath you write no consent is given. And then you usually have a return address on the back. You yeah. circle it, you put return to sender, put it back in a post box. 
right? Now, what you will find is they're not following the rules. They're not playing lawfully. Well, this is legal. We are under a military occupation because we're in England and they're in a different jurisdiction. Their jurisdiction is the UK or England and Wales, right? Right, right. So we have to say, well, oh, no, I'm a living man, right, on the soil and land of England. I'm not in the UK. I don't accept that jurisdiction. So I'm going to say, have it back. I don't consent to this contract. Because a contract yes. has between a, between a man and a man, or a man and a woman, or a woman and a woman. Not between a corporation. A corporation, you can't have a contract with a corporation unless you are a corporation. So this all capital's name is a corporation that they own. You don't own it. Hmm. And they unlawfully convert you into that. You accept liability for it. And then you're now contracting with them. So you, you, uh, you're accepting liability by, by uh, accepting jurisdiction or by consenting to or by thinking it's you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so but what do you do then if, um, if they're not playing by the rules? You know, it's all very well having these rules and saying, oh, well, we don't consent to this. And they turn around and say, well, I'm sorry, we're going to send the boys around, mm. which effectively is, is, you know. And the other thing is we're getting a lot of this uh, Freeman on the land is not acceptable for the council tax. Now, let me just show you uh, a graphic, not that one, because that's uh, that we've done that one. Um, let me see where it is. I've got to find it now. It's mm -hmm. it's so it's not that one. Here we go. So this is from East Hampshire, and it says there, uh, and this has been sent to one of my correspondents actually, um, one of my viewers said Freeman on the land and challenges to the legality of the council tax, and it then goes on to say you do not have a choice as to whether you are liable for the council tax. Um, it's, uh, and being a free man on the land does not exempt anyone from paying council tax. So I question is then, are we slaves? Yes, we are. But the first thing I would say about that particular document is it is, it is uh, uh, legal for them to charge you council tax. That's a legal thing. It's not lawful, right? And free man is a title. So again, they're converting you into this title. So I don't have that title. I'm not an occupier. I'm not a resident, right? I'm not a mister, right? Right. I'm just, I'm just Pete, or as I prefer, Pete the Hat. That's who I am. That's my sovereign name. Yeah. And uh, But you've got to somehow then convince them who are, especially the front office again, mm. the people who are sort of there being whipped <coughs> to, uh, well, we don't have this nonsense. Don't do, You know, they're all mad. They're all mad, this freedom on the land mm. business, this living man nonsense. They're, you know, they just, they're just trying to get out of it. So... Um, that seems to be their approach, isn't it? And and maybe mm. the people in there believe it all. Perhaps the higher echelons know, mm. and they're just saying, no, no, they're, they're all mad. Just uh, just um, send the boys in with the big sticks. Well, they're beginning to understand that isn't the case because they're being given notice, as I previously mentioned. Right. So when, you, when you give notice, it's the law of threes. You give your first notice is conditional acceptance. I conditionally accept that I should what? pay your council tax. The, that you're charging me, but first why, of all, why would you, you why why would you even conditionally accept it then? But you conditionally accept with the caveat. But first, you have to answer these questions, and the questions right. are around jurisdiction. What is your jurisdiction? Oh, okay. Where does your lawful authority derive from? Are you a corporation? Are you done? If you're a corporation, are you therefore a for-profit organisation? Various different things that will be addressed within the notice. Yeah. And once you send them a conditional acceptance and they don't respond, you say in the first notice, you give them fourteen days, or at least I do. And you say, if you don't respond to this, I'll send you a non-response and give you a further seven days. And then I'll send you a default and dishonor. At that point, if you haven't responded to any of my questions, it's a stopple, right? You have no further claim upon me. And then what you've yeah. got with the three notices, prima facie evidence that you are acting unlawfully, right? So um, I'm just looking at a comment there. Jeff Norton says you can tell them what you like. And he's written that in big capital letters to shout at us. Um, they don't listen, he says. No, they don't respond because they can't respond because that would be admitting the fraud. But once Well, it, I think what he means is they don't listen to your argument. They still come along, which I know personally, because uh, I know, Jeff, that's happened to him. Yes, that's happened to a lot of people. But if you're not standing in your sovereignty and you believe that's what's going to happen, what you give is what you get. So if you feel and fear that that's what's going to happen, that's what you create. That's another level. This is the spiritual side of it. You can't just have lawful and not have spiritual. You have to understand there's a balance that's taking place there. Right. There's a bigger picture here. So can, can I just come in here a little bit? When, when you're talking about the notice, 
it's not just a piece of paper, is it? It's a it's a big document because Pete has helped me out over a council issue, and it was like I don't know, sixty four pages with mm. so much information, so much information, and you know, so far, you know, I'm I'm on the winning side if there is a side to you know to to be winning. Um, it's helped me enormously. But again, you do have to take, you have to be prepared to, to stand up and sort of, you know, fight the, the battle, really, and be prepared to, to go wherever it's, where it's going to take you. Um, and also, I'd just like to say, are we, are we recording this show, by the way? Somebody yeah, said, yes, yeah, so, yeah, so, so, so we are, so we are recording, recording it. Yeah. Um, somebody at the very beginning of this said, well, without the council tax, how do we pay for the services? Which is quite a good question because I do feel that we we should pay a certain amount, you know, to hospitals and roads and 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 streetlights and things like that. But I mean, surely we decide what where it goes and you know how much we put in. What what would you say to that, one of you guys on the panel? But um, Dean, we haven't heard from Dean. Yeah, there, hi. Dean. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, so I I like to go things from at the very root of it. So, with regards to the council tax, how are they getting your name? How? Presumably, you've given it to them. Okay, so if you have given it to them, they are going to work on a presumption that you are going to pay council tax. How are they getting that fictional name? You must be able to comprehend that the birth certificate, i.e. the name is not really a name, it's an account. You have to recognise it as like a bank account. Right. All of the government birth certificates, they have got basically bank accounts. And any bills that they are going to produce, i.e. the government, they're going to notch it down to your bank account. You're going to be liable. So how are they getting the name? Because if they can't attach it to the name, i.e. an account, they can't charge you. So uh, if you've got your bill come back now um, from the council tax, um, you know, the envelope that drops in at the big just before April in March, as we're all seeing here in the UK, uh, in Great Britain, in England, whichever jurisdiction we happen to be in, um, and you just say, I just just return it then, uh, um, as if to say, well, it's not me. Does that is that no. then not giving them the name? No, because if they are writing to a person, they've already mm. got that name. You right. see, the name, the name, the birth certificate was created by law. That law was words. They created it, so it is subservient to them. The birth certificate, i.e., the name, is the bottom of the ladder. So it has to pay all the bills, but how are they getting that name? If they can't attach a name to it, they can't bill it. Right. Well, um, most people probably who are challenging this for whatever reason have been woken up and, and come to that, I would imagine, are already in their house and have already given their name in ignorance. Well, then they have consented. Then yes, but what you're saying is that it's tough, tough tits, yeah, mate. Yeah, you're stuffed. You, you know, you've, I've lived in my house for 35 years nearly, and uh, 35 years ago when I moved in, you know, I was incredibly ignorant. In fact, I was ignorant to about 15 months ago. So, mm. um, are you saying, well, that's tough, mate? I'm saying that if you are using that name, which is actually not yours, you didn't create it, mm. and you are accepting the liabilities for it. So how do you not use that name? I mean, can you just, just change your name? I mean, people change their names. People have stage names, for example, if, or they just call themselves something that, different. Say, from now on, I'm known as Figglethod. Isn't, isn't that, that something that you can do? Yes, I can do it. I mean, I just called it. You can call me Figglethod from now on. Well, there you go. Easy. But, right. uh, but I don't think the council will be very, you know, they'll go, well, you can call yourself anything, but we've come to get money from this name. So, yes. I mean, people will really become unnerved if they even think about not using their so-called legal name again. It right. will unnerve them. I mean, me and you spoke the other day about 
um, the birth certificate death. If you yes. was to mention that to people, it will unnerve them. Yes, and what you're referring to there is that when you, um, if you're looking after, say, a, a deceased parent and you become the executor of their estate, you are effectively putting that birth certificate to, to bed, as it were, about the death. But that's actually what's also happened about your birth certificate, because I think you said it's not the baby they're registering, but the placenta, which is dead. But they've named the placenta. Am I right? Is that is that what somebody told me that? Yeah, that that's partially right, but it, it's never attached to the actual body. They simply get you to act for it. Right. That's what like, they need. It's like, it's like pin the donkey. Have you ever p played pin the donkey? Yes. Pin, <laughs> right. pin the tail on the donkey. Push, that's right, yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. Pin the tail on the donkey, right? So what they do is they pin the birth certificate to you and yes. you walk round and, and act for it. Yes. Like, a, I mean, the way I look at it, only because I come from the entertainment background, it's like an agent looking after a, an author or a, a, a performer. An actor. A manager. Mm. But yeah, so mm. you're sort of going, oh, yes, that Richard Vobes, yes, he's brilliant. Mm. Uh, he's fantastic, and you should book him. Whereas Richard Vobes, or the entity using that name, um, may not have quite so much um, clout if he's saying, oh, I'm brilliant, I'm brilliant. Whereas an agent can do that, and an agent might pay all his bills, for example, or look after him, just as a, a, a mother would do for yeah. their uh, boys and girls. Yeah, but so if people view the birth certificate, i.e. the name, as a bank account, right. then give them a different perspective on what is happening. But it doesn't stop the boys with the sticks mm. coming and mm. taking away your possessions or your goods or no, however they want to. The beginning was consent. If they've got your name, then you, you have probably given it to them in some ways. Therefore, you have consented. Right. So, for instance, the, the lady that's been in the, in the news recently, our news, um, who has stage four cancer that was evicted. Are we all aware of that story? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, she's, she's consented, I guess, and, and it's just too late for her. She hasn't done the homework. Is, is, is that how this is? We have to do the homework first before it gets to that stage? Yeah, you have to be able to comprehend how this system works in order to avoid it. So when it's come to that far, though, and, and also looking at some of the comments there, other people, you know, they, they might have said, I'm, I'm sovereign and stood in their sovereignty, but um, the, the boys in blue have come knocking. So I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say it to you this, that for me, the two most important things, the moment there was more than one man or woman on this land, so the moment there was two people on this land, law and language must exist because otherwise there would be conflict. So law and language must be learned by everybody. Right. But we are, the thing is, we are where we are and people are learning this for the first time. I mean, let's just come back to that one point. Are you suggesting that if you've lived where you have lived and you are ignorant through not your fault because you were never taught this, is that it? Tough tits, you can't, um, you can't do anything about it because you've given that jurisdiction away. Can you not claim back? Can you not say, actually, hang on a minute, there's an error here. Uh, because I was never told this when I was a kid. No one's that. My parents were duped out of this. This this contract that we have is not actually a meeting of the minds. Uh, it is should it is null and void. And therefore, I'm I'm putting a line underneath it and stating changing my standing and and admitting that this is who I am and I'm not that. Well, every everything that you do presumes that you are acting for that name because let's say that you've put your title uh, uh, on the land registry or you've somehow given it to the council tax or you've given it to DVLA. Everything that we do, remember, it's not just what we say, it's what we do by our actions. Sure, but can you not go back and say th there's an error here? It's of all course. been done by mistake and, and correct that error and say... You've got me down as Richard Vobes, but actually I'm Figgly Fog. Yep. Well, no, why, why would you give them another name? 
well, what? You, I, okay, so you would say, well, I'm not that. Thank you very much. Good night. Yes. Right. Okay. Has that answered that, has that, answered <laughs> that question? <laughs> Let's see if one of the other guys want to have, have has any comments on on this because this is a biggie, isn't it? Really, because we all want to stand in our sovereignty and 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 do the right thing, but we are being harassed. You know, I've had a recent issue with my car. You had an issue with your car. I I caved in and paid the fine. I'm um, still holding out. You're still holding out because I couldn't sleep at night thinking they're going to come and take my car. And it's not a very ple a pleasant place to be. No. But as Sook says, you've got to, you've got to be organised. You've got to be prepared. And I'm not quite ready there. After that, you know, there's work to be done. Sook's got his uh, hand up and wants yeah. to say something. Over to you, sir. Yeah, I suppose we covered quite a lot of ground quite quickly there. I think some of those questions were answered. I'm just going to quickly try and keep it brief, just going back to a few points because we've been jumping around. So the first one was, um, why do we uh, provide an, a notice of conditional acceptance? And Pete went into that quite nicely. The only thing I just wanted to add on to that is because the other thing, the difference between uh, the Jedi and the Sith, the difference between those who are operating from a platform of love versus those who are operating from a platform of fear is that those who are operating from a platform of love are stood in truth. And when you're stood in truth, you're fearless. So when you're fearless, the notice of conditional acceptance shows you're fearless because it says, I will accept what you are saying if you can prove to me that what you're saying is truthful. Right. And because you are in absolute confidence of the of the matter that you're in at hand and because you understand your conscience and you stand in honor when you do it okay it's really important because you're not trying to fool them you're being open so for me the fact you can you can basically state that it was a mistake of fact right in law it was a mistake of fact that i ever thought that i was a birth certificate or a capital name whatever there's, there's documents you can write to cancel that out because you haven't consented to something for which you didn't know the terms and conditions for it's all fraud and it's all corruption the fact that they think that that's how they want it to work doesn't make it legal or lawful in mm. this incident if the, the irony here is most of what they're doing isn't even legal let alone the fact it's not conscientious or lawful yeah, because they become that complacent in what they're doing and, and in content. Now, we are up against possibly the most formidable, at least the most audacious opponent in living and recorded history. Never before has someone tried to take control of the entire uh, population of the, of the, of the, of the world um, with, with a single event, such as they have with COVID-19 and locking people down and all the rest of it. So... Yeah, when you're up against people like that, it's difficult. The Donbass region voted for their independence and have got the Russian military might to back them. They, that was their self-determination. That was their notice of conditional acceptance. And you've seen the level that the opposition will go to to do that. Yahshua, Christ, was stood in truth. Mm. But people have to understand that if you want to follow and truth, you follow the trail of blood. And if you want to follow the deception, you follow the trail of money. And freedom and sovereignty is not a game that you can play while being in fear of losing your car or even losing your head. Right. Okay, in, this, in, the, in, the, in this battle, people first, that's what I said at the beginning, what people have to get, get really to terms with is what's more important to you. And when you come to terms with the fact that death is far more favourable than life as a slave, then you've made the jump into the world of sovereignty. But if you think, and look, it's not for the other part of sovereignty, it's your decision. You may prefer peaceful slavery to dangerous freedom. Okay, Thomas Jefferson said that he preferred dangerous freedom to peaceful slavery. And that's a decision for each person. There are people who may well choose slavery. And I respect that choice. It's not my decision. And I suspect it's not the decision of the individuals that I've spoken to on the call. But it's a decision that some people will choose to take. Sure. And, 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 know, so and I guess as we transition now, because I mean, it's clearly that, that all of this is coming to some form of head mm. by the fact that there are mm. loads of podcasts and we're all talking about this and we're, we're making it. That, that there, there are probably some people who will, will go, yeah, this sounds good, but I'll just carry on paying until... Um, the tipping point is reached and then I'll join the fight. Um, and that might be okay because some people may be in their 70s and, and they're just not 
you know, they're not up for it. They, the fear or the fight or whatever Absolutely. it is, the preparedness. So, um, but they may well be behind us urging us on, going, no, you, you go over the, you go over the top first and mm. um, I'll, be, I'll be here with the kettle. Which is always handy, isn't it? It is. Sure that, uh, the, the, yeah, sorry, the other two points really quick, I remember. The one which was around the council tax and we need to pay for stuff. Okay, look, just think about it. There's 70 million, roughly, of us on this island at any one point in time. This mm. island has provided sustenance for every generation that's ever landed here and every other generation that will ever land here after us. It has an infinite resource of wealth, it is infinite. It's a complete abundance. The notion that any individual soul who's here for a mere 70, 90 years should need to pay for public infrastructure, which is there for essentially eternity, it's nonsensical. The reason people think that is because you've been conditioned onto a scarcity model of economics, not right. an abundance model of economics. Right, and so that's the so council said, no, you don't need to pay towards it. It's paid through the through the collective productivity of the realm. Okay, that's why the states never used to have the taxes because there is an economic model without tax that's there. And tax is unlawful, by the way. It goes against the constitution and every ancient text, including the Torah, the Quran, the Gospels, the Ard Grant, and indeed the constitution itself. That's a fact. And so I'm happy for him to try and challenge that. And the third one, really quickly, on the birth certificate. I have a slightly different view on this for people to try and understand this. The law pertains to the living, men, women, and their offspring. Mm. The legal is for the non-living entities. So right. not ghosts and ghouls, but corporations, institutions, charities, and governments. How I come from a, from a deep systems background, designing systems and stuff. How I see what's gone wrong here is the birth certificate. And it's this reason. Living men and women may wish to contract with corporations for various services, a mobile phone, an internet connection, some other commodity or product someone's created. And they want to do it with a limited liability. I want to be able to buy a mobile phone and in both directions, there's a limited liability. The whole point of the birth certificate is it's supposed to be a safety cutout fuse that it's there as a profile into the corporate world. It is not supposed to be that you become the profile. It's like you thinking you're your Facebook avatar, that that's really you. Yeah, that's what's happening. The, the birth certificate, if you understand it, is a legitimate mm. gateway for the living to interact with the non-living, legal entities, constitute, uh, corporations and everything else. But if the living feel that their inalienable rights have been infringed, they can pull that safety cutout fuse, which is the birth certificate, and then they can do all of the things that the gentlemen are talking about because that understanding is there, that the legal is there for corporate non-living contracts which do not affect your inalienable rights. But as soon as your inalienable rights are infringed, you stand on them and you call law into uh, action to hold the legal to account. The legal is not satanic. A system cannot be satanic. What's happened here is that people have been fooled into thinking they are something they are not. Something they are supposed to have control of is now controlling them. Okay, and that's the difference. For me, if I was to design a system for the future, it's exactly the system we've got today, but where people are using it as it's supposed to be used. The law is used through constitutional common law courts for the living and upholding inalienable rights. Legal is used for all the other stuff that has nothing to do with inalienable rights. And if any of that legal stuff infringes on your rights, you call the law to hold it to account. Then it doesn't even matter whether you put Hitler, Saddam Hussein, uh, Pinochet and Mao in cabinet. There's nothing they can do to harm you because the moment they try, you call the court of common law and you put it put that legislation to bed you nullify it and so that's the birth certificate for me it was a system designed for a purpose but people have got really mixed up and now there's sort of traumatic emotions attached to the legal you know we just need to know what it is and how to use it and then there's very little that actually needs to happen as a change and do you that's think it. that when no no brilliant um um fantastic answer um 
and and a description of it. So do you think that when the birth certificate came in, that was the the intent? But somehow, I mean, I'm, I'm sure the early adopters of the birth certificate didn't really. I mean, they still called themselves those names, presumably. So I believe, honestly, I'm just going back. But what do I believe? I believe there were some good guys that were told that was the intent. And then I think there were some other guys who knew full well what they were going to do over the coming decades and centuries. They could and see everything is told with good intent. Right. Everything yeah, it is. Everything is told with good intent. That's how they convince you. But then in the background, the subtleties and the subversion comes in. And that's the genius of the, of the um, illusion and the deception. Shall we? Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, shall we move on to some? It's uh, we're at back, almost an hour in. Shall we move on to some other questions at this yeah, point? Yeah, we can. We can do. It up a bit because I, I have a feeling that on these um, sessions we're going to come back to a number of these yeah. very big issues, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, and they are big issues. They're huge issues. Um, one was quite interesting that I picked up. Somebody said sovereign. So because this is a word game, isn't it? We've all been told different names and different words and understand and stand under, etc. Somebody said sovereign is their language because of royalty. So, you know, we're all saying we're sovereign. Are we saying we're royalty? We're above royalty? What's that one all about? So the definition of sovereign for us. Yes. Then, is yeah, that for what us, it is? mere mortals. Us, yeah, mere peasants. Anybody on the panel like to uh, take that one on? The uh, understanding of the word sovereignty mm. or being sovereign. Is it the king or is it us? I'm looking. None of the no hands, no hands gone up. Yeah, gonna, I mean, Sue, so I would expect to answer this because that's his that's his uh, avatar, well, isn't it? it? Sovereign mind. The honest language existed way before the sort of subverted definitions came into play. So you know, for all of these things, there were there were sovereign kings before there was a sovereign corporate entity. So yeah, the fact that they've taken language and subverted it. Um, we just need to take it, you know, it's our language at the end of the day. It's humanity. Take it back. It's populations are. You take it back. You are, And you take it back with education and knowing what the true meaning of those words are. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, we and are all royal. Yes. Somebody's saying, yes, we are all royal. Like it. Like, that's yeah. great. That's great. And another one that keeps popping up, see, if it might have gone now, is say Kiwi Trust. Does that mean anything? The Sesta Kv Trust. Oh, Sesta Kv. The Sesta Kv. I was trying to be French. Sesta Kv. What is <laughs> well, it? Latin. Say it in a, say say, it in a French say, way. Uh, okay. Oh no. <laughs> Later, darling. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Hands up. Suk again. <laughs> so, the Ses This is a really contentious issue within the whole of the truth movement. So, whether or not it exists in the context of it being some sort of a trust fund stuff doesn't matter. If we imagine how the bankers work. What we have to understand is that when they're trading, you can trade in current. They have something called futures. And in futures, what you do is you trade what you think the future value of a stock is going to be. Mm. That is essentially how the birth certificate is being operated by the bankers. They are basically looking at it and saying, right, an individual in the realm of the UK is worth to us, uh, say, two and a half million pounds over their lifetime in productivity. And so that's, that's the value that they're trading on the stock market based on the value that you will bring into the business of the UK. The right. case of these, this, what they, this, the Sescovy Trust in the way they're using it, they're using it as a future commodities thing, that's one aspect of it economically. The other side of it is there are, for argument's sake, 8 billion people on this planet. That means each person has one eight billionth of the gold, one eight billionth of the water, one eight billionth. Of... That's not practical. So you could see it as they've put in a number of trust funds which have a quantity that is the equivalent of one of eight billion of the resources of the world. And now you have an abundant account from which you can express and live your life. Okay. And someone's taken that using the birth certificate, they flipped it and they're using that account against you instead of for you. So you've become the trustee of that trust to use a metaphor rather than the beneficiary of that trust. Now the other hocus pocus and stuff that goes around that trust fund stuff, I don't want to get into, but from my, in my opinion, from an economics perspective and a deception perspective, that in Fisher Price terms is how I see it. Grand. 
Well, I hope that answered the question, gentle, <laughs> gentle listener, uh, viewer. Um, so, yeah, no, uh, and, well, I, as you say, you didn't want to get into it, so I won't uh, open that up. We've got the, quite a few questions, so let's move we on have, to We one. have, and another one, again, is a question. Like how, how, how to get the original manufacturer certificate of the origin for the car? How can you get hold of that? Can you get hold of can it? Can you get hold of that? And, and why? So. Any, any other hands? Oh. We've got Pete the Hat. Pete the Hat. Uh, well, I would say, in my experience, uh, no one's actually tried that I know of. We, we only think it exists. Uh, it's been talked about, Manufacturer's Certificate of Origin. There's another name for it, which I forget off the top of my head. But it's, we know that if you register with DVLA, so you purchase a new car, you register, they automatically send that certificate to DVLA, so they own the car, and you become the registered keeper. Why do they own the car? This is, uh, I mean, because you because have a they, receipt. Our whole, our whole uh, um, uh, what would you call it, system is built on certificates. You have a certificate to show that you're uh, the one who's qualified. The certificate to show, so you, had a, you, had a, you, have a, you have a certificate to show you're vaccinated, essentially, right? You have a certificate, right. a certificate for that, and that gives you access then, or allows you to do something. So if you have the certificate for the manufacturer's certificate of origin, you can then prove that you own the property. It's your property. It's not a car. It's not a vehicle. That's their language. You have to understand the language that's in use here. And so if you then can prove that you own it, as soon yes. as you register with the DVLA as well, you're in commerce because you've got a contract with the DVLA that, as a consequence of which says that you're in commerce, which is why they can enforce acts upon you, traffic acts upon you, because you, that's not your property. That's their property. They own it. It doesn't belong to you. So they can do Even what, they, it, like. they, can do what it, they like with it. And the birth certificate, going back to that, because the birth certificate, when the mother informs on the child, the state owns that birth certificate and therefore owns the child, which is why the state can come to your house and take your children away. It's the same principle. Right. So, I mean, OK, go back to the uh, the conveyance, the car, the vehicle. Uh, even though you have handed over some money or even, let's say, gold to get rid of fiat currency for the moment, um, and you've got a receipt for that, you still don't own it. No, because when you register it with your V5C2, you're then giving ownership to the DVLA. So as soon as and, you register and, anything, you give away your title. Right. It's even even though, it. again, you even though you are technically you are ignorant of that fact. You, you know, you haven't agreed to it. Well, most people are ignorant of this fact. That's what this yeah. is about. Right. They don't understand exactly. what title is. No. So again, the meeting of the minds, as they might say, you know, in terms of a contract between right. the two of you, right. you've you, you, you've you, no understanding that you've actually you've actually you've actually consented to the contract. Mm. So does that not make it null and void? It does, but then you have to call it out and rescind it. So can you go back? Um, can you go back to the DVLA, as some people are doing, and saying, actually, I, I just want to correct that because although I may have registered it in the past, that was an error. That was a mistake because I was ignorant of how it should have been done. And actually, now I'm informing you that it is actually mine because I've paid for it and I've got the uh, thing, and I'm correcting the mistake. Could you do that? Alternatives have been suggested of deregistering from the DVLA, from exporting it to England, which is a living jurisdiction, to asking them to give you the manufacturer's certificate of origin. But you're up against a fraudulent uh, and criminal, organized criminal uh, um, right. entity. So yes. they're not going to play ball, right? which is why we use notice. Because if you don't rebut it after I've given you the three notices, and further still, if I find, produce an affidavit, which is in their world, and use the notices as evidence, right? An affidavit, unrebutted, point for point, stands as a judgment. You don't have to go to a court. It's judgment. But, again, but if, they're just, if they're just carrying on playing fraudulently, I mean, surely they just, like they seem to be, is just ignore even all of that. Well, it becomes a numbers game. If everybody changed their number plate overnight, what would they do? Well, that's true. Yeah, no, you're quite right. And that's that's you know that's mm. the, the most simple body and try and process them. It's impossible. No. So people have to I... wake up and take back their sovereignty by taking action. And you start with what you're about, as a success, what you're what you're you're willing to lose in that fight, and mm. what you're not, and move forwards. And we're all finding different avenues that we can take in order to challenge this system that we know is fraudulent 
in order to take back our sovereignty one step at a time. And the more people that do that, the greater the impact. So it's building momentum and building momentum and gradually moving forward. And it, there will be a tipping point. Can how far we, How far do you think we are from that tipping point then? I, I couldn't say. I don't right. think that's possible to say. No. But because a few people on, on the uh, the chat here are saying, OK, it's spiritual, we get that, it's sovereign, it's equity, it's natural law. But they just want like a quick answer, you know, as we all do, I guess, because that's the, the world in which we, we live now. Everything's so, so immediate, isn't it? Um, and people are saying it's a numbers game, which we are aware of. But is there any way of like joining those two things together, getting enough people to fill in, you know, these rebuttals, these notices? Is there a shortcut or do we all have to sort of get this eureka moment thinking, oh, now I get it. I've got to do this, this work. No, there's no shortcut. You have to build communities. You have to build yes. communities that are willing to cooperate with other men and women outside of that system. And that's a first step in the right direction, I believe. Well, I think that's that's where I started. You know, the Freedom Network was to do that, uh, to just to create these communities all over the country, all over the world. And I think a lot of them have come together. So many people have come together. But then, it, and you know, whether it's growing food or home educating your children or creating some other form of currency, because we haven't even talked about currency um, yet with the digital, possible digital, you know, stuff that they're going to throw our way. But even though you have got these communities being built. Is there is there a way you know for these groups of people to, to you know a shortcut? Again, I've come back to the same question. Suk, Suk's got his hand up here. Has he? Oh yes. Yeah. There's no there's no shortcuts, and there's no shortcuts for really really good reasons. And once you understand those reasons, you would push back against shortcuts, because the problem we have here is that you know. It, Unfortunately, people have been raised over the last hundred years with a lack of resilience, a lack of attention span. Um, and now they're throwing all sorts of acronyms as to why you've got no attention um, and why you've got this problem and that problem. Look, there is a deep healing process that individuals have to go through and the collective has to go through as a result of where we've got to. There are no shortcuts to the sovereignty. It's shortcuts that got us into this mess, right? Because people haven't taken the time. The best things in life, there are no shortcuts to. You can't make you can't make a baby you can't make a baby in four and a quarter months with two right. women, right? There are certain gestation periods that have to occur in nature, and some of those are for intelligence and consciousness to percolate through people's. Um, beings so that they can start to be knowledgeable in that then they can start to understand it and then they can start to live wisely and they can actually start to apply it so there are no shortcuts and you know i, I mean this as a, as a deep spiritual comment those people looking for shortcuts first need to look at themselves as to right. why they're looking for shortcuts yeah you know that is the problem here you know you haven't fully understood the problem if you think that the solution can be solved with a shortcut Mm, I yeah. love that. I love that. It's um. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just sneezing. Off, off, <laughs> a sneaky, off a sneaky, a sneaky, uh, sneaky sneeze. Um, I was <laughs> gonna, I was gonna ask you then because if if the if a lot of people are sort of pushing people to say not pay their council tax, but they haven't fully embraced exactly what you've been saying, and the and the ideal would be to build communities so that there are the numbers to then do it when everybody's understood. Perhaps then not paying your council tax is not the right answer at this stage for some people who might ordinarily have wanted to um, challenge it but don't feel fully embraced and don't want to lose the battle. But when the... Because I feel that communities are building. I and agree. I feel that over the, this year and next year, we're going to see a huge amount. But it, but people may not... But, you know, they may be con wanting to concentrate on building the communities rather than fighting off the system at this stage yeah. because the yeah. system seems to be getting weaker and weaker and, and i think i know six got his hand up but i think one needs support which comes from communities and a lot of people are going through this chat they're saying you know do we on the panel or sitting in your studio here have we are, are we paying our council tax i mean it's not about that it's, that's irrelevant to be honest well i, I mean i was going to challenge it uh, this year but then yeah. i'm wondering i you know maybe i shouldn't be not paying the council tax um this time round um, and concentrating on building communities 
and putting my eggs into that basket rather than... I mean, it's yeah. bad enough with the uh, enforcement agent desperately trying to take well, my yeah. van away. You, you've got to choose your battles. For clean air, you know. Uh, absolutely. For yes, a stupid exactly. thing. Which, um, should, which should be free anyway. You have to choose your battles. Dean, and, Dean and is... Um, Dean is waving. And so is Sook. Bless them. So they're, oh, they're chomping at the bit here. Yeah, let's go to Dean. Dean. Yeah. Um, Richard, that was very honest of you to say so. And my words are to people is that don't go further than you're willing to go. Because it gets right. very real very quickly. And Sook is nodding. In, in We can't see him, but he's, he's in agreement is with he you. Not, yeah. Yeah. And I'm nodding as well. Right. Are so, we nodding? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, part of part of this is a learning curve for myself. Mm. And I've been listening, as you will be well aware of, over the last 15 months, talking to all sorts of um, interesting and uh, delightful uh, contributors. And part of my thought was, well, we ought to just be en masse not paying the council tax because I disagree with handing my money over to terrorists yeah. who are handing the money over to arm battles overseas which have no concern to me or indeed my fellow man and woman here and um and so you know morally i feel i shouldn't be paying this bloody thing but at yeah. the same time now i'm i'm feeling well maybe i ought to just prepare yourself yeah, accept that yeah. even though it's against their own rules to aid and abet terrorism Good. deal with that but um concentrate on the i mean for me that the farming and communities is the number and food is the number one thing Richard, I think as yes it will come to you listen to yourself it will come to you it, say a bit more <laughs> meaning don't force yourself to make an act an action it will come to you when you are ready it will come to you you will do it, it you will know it yeah, I, and and I thought I was there, mm, but mm. dealing with just this stupid, you, yeah. um, you know, a, a nine pound whatever it is to drive in, in um, Bristol was it in, in Bath, Bath, you know, for two nine one going to the hotel and one coming out, yeah. and now this guy coming there with my name spelt wrong, not listening at all, and wanting like eight hundred quid out of me. I mean, I just feel that's so morally wrong. I can't pay that because yeah. I, I, and I know my van is at risk that they'll take it and and then I'll have to pay and they'll have the two hundred pound or two fifty on top for the truck. But but the, my I also feel if I if I acquiesce then the people watching will go, Well, if they can do it to Richard Vobes, they can do it to us and we won't challenge it. Not that I'm putting myself up, it's just no. being having a public face. Just is, uh, um, one yeah, point go on, on Dean. Um so on, on the on the sort of truck, the car thing, um, you, you're obviously in the system, so you could use the system, you could put it in a trust, and therefore you, as in the name, wouldn't own it. So any debts that would be attached to that name, i.e. your name, couldn't be attached to the trust. So right. there is a way around that. But you need to be fully uh, able to comprehend the trust s system to, to yes. do it. Just, it's, I, I, I think I for me... Like, I don't like monkey see, monkey do. I like monkey to be able to understand what the monkey's doing. <laughs> Who are you calling a monkey? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> swine. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, yes, I suppose for me it's like the speed of of you know because the, the guy may turn up tomorrow that's the thing you know that you just never know it may turn up in the next 10 minutes you may see me yeah. being dragged out as the, and i'll have to press all these buttons and so you let's won't hope know not. i'll pay really. the fine yeah. oh will you <laughs> well i did for mine well, yeah when there they came I'll, knocking on my door i'll I, hold I, that yeah. to you karen said she'll pay it i'll ring them up now i was right? only joking oh. <laughs> Um, by the way, just as a, a, I'm going to just add this for the fun of it. I mean, they do say in their documentation that they want to control my goods. And uh, so I thought, well, I might have a little scrounge around the house and fill up a bag full of stuff I don't want anymore and would have <laughs> taken down the tip. But they could sell it and just send it to their P.O. box address. Do you think that's a, a good idea? Yes. <laughs> yes. Because they yes. want the goods. It's just like, yeah, yeah. do you want yeah. some more? Uh, you want my stuff? 
take it. And then at <laughs> least I've I've offered it to them, haven't I? Yes. I mean, I've, I'm offering some stuff. They may not like it delivered, <laughs> you know, constant loads of stuff. I mean, as long as it's not offensive, I'm not going to put no. feces in there. Old socks and stuff, and yeah. Old socks, old, yeah. yeah. But there might be some old tech here that would yeah. they could sell. And they say, look, this is from 1992. Actually, I've got some old cameras. They might, you know, I'd be pleased to get shot of them, to be honest. So uh, do you, do it, Dean reckons that's a good... Uh, Sue, over to you, sir. Yes, sir. So, I mean, the first, my first thing I want to say is that from a, from a natural law perspective, the objective of your life is not not to pay your bills. Right. The objective of your life is to live a fully expressive life consciously, to experience the love and all the emotions and everything else. Well, it's a lot of people have started their lives. You've got young children, you've got dependent parents. That's why I said at the beginning, don't risk anything you can't afford to lose. Right? If people are going into position, at the same time, there is mm. a clock ticking. There is going to be a point where everyone is going to be in a position where there's people knocking at the door. The economy's mm. run out of money in 20, 2008, 2010. So there's, a, there's two parts to this. Yeah, I know someone famously called me a dangerous wanker for going around asking people to take action. But the one thing that sort of I'd re rebut that is that I've always told people, don't take on what you can't afford. If you choose to stop paying council tax and it causes you chronic anxiety that you are no longer a good mother or father and you're destroying your responsibilities in natural law because you, you know, tried to follow someone else, that's not good. Your primary mm. responsibilities are to be a conscientious parent. Anything else? Maybe your fight is to homeschool the children. You know, make sure that they go completely against the system. It's a multi generational fight. You haven't got to do it all before you retire. You know, but you've got to pick a strategy over over one, two, three generations that's going to be um, effective. You know, you don't have to do it all in one go. But at the same time, remember this, that the economy has collapsed and that there yeah. are more and more people. The reason that we've got so busy and there's so many of us now is there's more and more people feeling the pain. And pain is what wakes people up, not truth. If truth okay. woke people up, people would have stopped smoking when they put the gory photos on packets years ago. right? When the pain strikes, people will then have their minds focused. So don't cause yourself anxiety. When you, right. You'll know you're winning when you're having fun with it, like you said sending them the goods you don't want. You're trolling them, right? I've had loads of times. Just for a record, I took the car and deregistered it with DVLA. And I was driving around for about, well, I was driving around for about two years, two and a half years uh, without any DVLA whatsoever. I even changed the number plates for the last 12 months to a Royal Mail tracking number, which is what's used as a postmaster general number. Okay, the police stopped me six times, five times they let me out. Once, even the sixth time, when they took the car in and said they wouldn't let it out without the number plate. I've got a video evidence of the car leaving the pound with the number plate on. Okay, I have paid the government nothing for over four years, and I'll never pay a corrupt organisation anything. I'd rather rot in hell on earth than have to answer for that at this pearly gates, whoever's on duty that day when I get there. OK, there are certain questions and there's a certain seriousness and severity to it that people also have to meditate on. Yeah, it's not about your bills and stuff. This is much deeper than that. This is about your sovereignty, your freedom, your conscience, and you operate in your free will. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's um, you know, if this is about money, don't take this fight on. Because if you want to make money, you're much better off in the system. OK, but if you want a life that's fulfilling with contentment, and you want to go out there and live a life based on love and abundance and transparency, then that's, that's what it is. There's two countries you can live in that I offer yeah. you. One is lawful. You can do anything you want as long as you don't cause anyone else any loss, harm, or injury. In the other one, it's legal. You can't do anything unless you're given a permit or a license and told so you can do it. I guess, the, I mean, sorry to butt in, um, but... Um, I guess the people uh, would like to know how to get into the lawful rather than the legal and not mm, deal with the mm, things. There's a lot mm. of comments. Um, I'm aware of people saying, oh, this is, there's too much philosophy going on. It's all a bit blah, blah, no real practical solutions. And again, it comes back, I guess, to that thing that people mm. just want and, you know, sign here, write this yeah. and you're, you're out of it. And, and I think what we're getting from the panel is that's not actually how it works no. because it's a it's a much deeper question and and those who perhaps want that instant fix are being too shallow. Yeah, 
Unfortunately, I, and I, think I don't you're right. mean to be mm, rude to him. No, I, I, and no, 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 that is essentially what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, to take great. Uh, Pete. Yeah, yeah. So if you want, if you want a um, not a solution, but a starting point for meeting with a community, something mm. that uh, turned up during the lockdowns was stand in the park movement. Now I don't know if any of you've heard of it. I'm sure the ones who are on this panel certainly have. Sure. Um, and I would say that you're find go and look online, find stand in the park, find your nearest park that has their gathering. They're still ongoing uh, around the country, and go and talk to people there and attend. It's on a Sunday at 10 a.m. usually, uh, likely to be near you somewhere, um, and start forming communities. Start is forming there a, is communities. There a, um... go, go and knock on your neighbour's door and say, "Do yeah. you know about this?" Do you think it's unlawful that we're being told to pay this and we don't even know why? Tax is unlawful. It's fraudulent, as, as Sukha's mm. mentioned, right? Yeah. Why are we paying it? Where is it? Do you think that the money you're paying on car tax is going on roads? Well, if it isn't, then why are you paying it? I'm not suggesting you withhold because you have to understand the implications of the actions you take, but you have to start questioning where is it all going? Mm. Right? Why is that happening? And what can you do about it right now for you? And if you need support, go and find support. Don't just sit online and watch YouTube channels, although I'm not suggesting you should stop doing that. But go and find other people who are like-minded. Seek them out. And mm. uh, can, can I just say on, on that basis, because somebody just said they've turned up to the park and nobody was there, because I know a lot of the stand in the parks have, have died a bit of a death, my local one. Not, I don't attend it, to be honest, but um, there's not many people that, that go. The Freedom Network is, is still running, so you can also find your communities or set one up just by going on to thefreedomnetwork.co.uk and then you'll, you'll come to me and I'll just add you on the map. There's an interactive map. You can see where your local group is or I can put you on there. Um, and also once these communities do develop, which they are, we know they are, they're, they're all forming. Somebody did mention, who was it, Tilly? She said to set up lawful centres. I mean, how, how, how does that sound, setting up a, law, a lawful centre? Great idea. Go champion it. Off you go. Yeah. Go and set yeah. up a lawful centre, right? Yeah. <laughs> Invite people in. Yeah, and see what happens. I know, I know. It's, it's, it's easy to say as people, people hear Joe Blogs, bless But him. at least they're talking. I mean, you know, it's even if you did that and it doesn't work very much, it might, it might draw start. in people who have never thought of that yeah. before. And you're, and you're starting you to... a conversation, which, which is away from the old conversation. Yeah. You have to recognise yeah. the, the power is within you. That's where yeah. it's derived from. OK, so I would also say something that we've not made it, uh, mentioned yet, but is part and parcel of uh, finding your own sovereignty for me and certainly for a lot of others. I know you have to meditate. You have to look within. You have to direct yourself to look within. The answers aren't out there. And as, as Dean said, you know, trust yourself when you're ready, you'll know what well, that comes right. from within. So I would I would also say, you know, meditate. And people say, oh, I haven't got time. I haven't got time. That's the usual excuse. Say so yeah. when you wake up in the morning, wake up 10 minutes earlier, do it for 10 minutes. It's very simple. Saying you haven't got time is, is a way of not committing to doing something which you don't see the value of. If you don't see the value of it, obviously don't do it. But I would urge people, try it. And don't just mm. try it for a week or a day. Set yourself a month and do it every 10 minutes every morning for a month and see if it has a positive effect. And how do I meditate and all those questions? Just don't worry about all that. Stop asking. Just let go and just see what comes up. And give yourself the, the, the space to have peace, to not have to worry, to not have to think about all the things that are stressing you and causing you anxiety. And just for that 10 minutes, let it all go and see how that works for you. Um, I just to, to yeah. add, well, I, mean, add, yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say, uh, but just to sort of um, manage between the panel and the audience, we've got more of these with different panel members coming. So if you're not happy with the answers that you're getting here, that's, um, you may want to join us on another one where we have different panel members who, who may have a different perspective on how to do it. And uh, that will be next Friday at eight o'clock. I just thought I'd get the advert in. Sorry, yeah. Sue. Yeah, no, the, the, there are technical people out there who go through the stuff that people want and nuts and bolts. But you know, people, when you say it's for lot, when people say it's too philosophical, it's it's shallow from a scope perspective. And the reason it's shallow is because you are in a fight and you're taking on a warrior archetype scenario. Bruce Lee, Mike Tyson, all of the great warriors, fighters, martial artists, all have a philosophy. That's what gives them the grounding to be able to take on the fight. 
without that philosophy, without a life strategy, without a belief system, they wouldn't be able to do it. And the stronger your belief system is, the, the stronger you're rooted in truth and understanding, the more powerful you'll be. Yeah. And when you're saying that these guys have got the numbers and they've got the men and they've got the big buildings, they've got the fast jets, what they haven't got is the depth of consciousness and soul that you've got. But that doesn't come from filling out a form. That comes from thinking about your life, thinking about what it means to you, thinking about whether or not, you know, when next time you're asked a question, what's more important to you, your life or your freedom? These are questions that have to be asked. Is that thinking needs to be deep? At the end of it, you might come up with the same answer. Yes. But it's not a process or a template. There's people that are winning this fight with no processes and no templates. Okay, they're not using any of that. They are just basically saying, I'm not consenting. And yeah. that's it. I stand under and, the and, creator, and I, that's it. So, you know, and, and people are actually saying that in the in the in the chat there. Yeah. And uh, I think that you, you've made there a really interesting argument, which actually resonates with me because effectively, what you're saying is you need to think about your long term strat. You know, if you take that war scenario that you're talking about, the battle, you wouldn't as just having your your army go. Well, okay, then it's a free fall. Go and attack yeah. them because that would be stupid. Because effectively, you're just throwing stones. And they're missing. They're wide of the mark. They've got no sights. The weapons aren't particularly well. Or you're not even trained to fire those weapons. You know, you've got a bow and arrow and you don't know which end to put the arrow in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's, it's, so, so having that, you know, what, what they're sort of saying is philosophy, which I guess it is, is just having structure and uh, a knowledge on, on your approach. And, and then I guess that the belief that you mentioned is about staying with that right the way through the course or only changing when you know that's the time to do it rather than going with a, a scattergun approach. You're going, well, I've tried notices, now I'm going to try this or I'm going to try that. Exactly. And, and you've, you've weakened your... Yeah, it's being prepared, isn't it? Yes. Being, yeah, exactly. being prepared. Yeah. And look, there's, three, there's three steps that we always say to follow. The first thing is follow no one. Okay? The second one of that is write no one off. And the third one is take each piece of information and data on its own merits, applying critical thinking and analysis. Okay, if, if everyone tried to follow those three steps, not only would they be sovereign, but all controlled opposition would be nullified and neutralized overnight. You know, all of the people that are misled, because everyone will be following their own conscience. Right? And your path and journey through this, whatever your life is, whatever decisions and however you choose to live it, your success has got nothing to do with whether everyone else is successful or not, right? Yeah. So whether you become, have, a, have a successful spiritual journey, ascendancy, whatever you want to call it, is not tied into whether the collective joins you or not. And if the collective doesn't join you, it just means that, that this wasn't that point in history. And then you just go again. We shouldn't be mostly invested in that. We should be doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do, not because we're going to think, not because we think we're going to save the world. Yeah. You say, um, I'm going to be a bit facetious here, but you say you don't follow, um, know what, f follow yourself. It's very difficult when you have a wise man with a beard because... <laughs> They're the ones to look out for. You don't yeah. trust anyone that's no. got long hair. You know, and Gandalf had a beard. Especially and looks, with like, that, and looks like that stab guru idiot off YouTube. You don't follow them. <laughs> Uh -oh. I should I should grow a beard and people would then maybe <laughs> listen to the nonsense I come out with. Uh, Pete, mind you, maybe we should follow people with hats. Pete the Hat yeah. has got his hand up. Yeah, no, Pete. and, and six, right, you know, don't get significant, right? You know, we're only as strong as the, the values we hold, I think, or the ethics we hold, even the morals we have. And so yeah. he made a nice little list. I thought I'd, I'd give you mine. So I have, because it's a philosophy, is right. It's a philosophy you live by. That's what determines you do or do not do, because inaction is just as important as action. So for me, it's do no harm, right? Help others, because that gives you access to growth. And if you're not growing, you, you're, you're, you're atrophying. Uh, um, forgive and bless. If you don't forgive, you're going to keep turning that wheel of karma, right, for yourself and for others. So you have to forgive and bless others. The, um, this is not my enemy. This is someone who needs my love in order to grow, right? And then the fourth thing is keep your word, because that's how you're whole. See, people misunderstand integrity. They think that it's professionalism, but it isn't. It's whole like, uh, whole like the hull of a boat, has no holes in it. So if you give your word to someone to do something, then do it. And also to yourself, if you are going to say something you're going to do for yourself, do it for yourself. 
those are the four things that, that I try to live by. And that informs how I then move forwards. I think this is really interesting because I think people have come here with the idea that, oh, great, we can just get some easy answers to some um, immediate problems that we've had. Mm. And actually, although some of the viewers out there may well disagree because they, that's what they want, this is a much deeper process mm. Mm. because it is about who we are and, and how we not just deal with this, but our whole aspect on life um, and, and being in honour, which is a very important thing to be. Yeah, absolutely. Would you agree on that? And yeah, absolutely. And with integrity, exactly what these guys have said, totally. And, and it's really hard to get that because it's a feeling. It's not something you can just pick up and read a book or, or listen to what somebody says. You have to go through some stuff, really, to, to get to that understanding of what this is all about. And it's a spiritual, it's a spiritual battle that we're in. Yeah, and sorry, I think that it's important that if we did just come on here and give people those easy processes, we would basically be getting you into a lot of trouble. Right. right? Because, and that's the thing, that's been, that's been the biggest worry is that people do it out of panic or to keep up with the Joneses or they feel like peer pressure to do it. They're all wrong reasons to do it. You know, we're not here to put people off. We need, you need, you know, it's, you need to encourage, inspire and, and help and support people on the journey. But it's a journey that you have to decide to take, you know, and it's really important that when you do it, you go into it eyes wide open. You don't step into the ring with someone like Tyson without training first. You know, you've got to be prepared for it. And it is a battle and they will make it very uncomfortable for you if you're not prepared. If you're prepared, it's going to be the most ultimate, enjoyable, amazing time of your life. This is the best time to be alive in the last 6,000 years. And this is the best place for it. Because this is where democracy, where people directly control the law under which they live using annulment by trial by jury, which might be for another time, we'll watch Will Keats' interview with Richard Voves. Hmm. Right? That is ultimately where it's at. To have that sovereignty as a nation, we have to have a nation of strong individuals. And the process we're going through now and since Brexit and going forward for the, for the next few years is about us investing in each other and making each other stronger. Whether or not that's challenging the system or first working on the cells, you know, you make yourself stronger first, get ready. And if you can't get ready to take the opponent on directly, then, you know, help the others who can, help them with the paperwork, pick up the kids from school, whatever it is you can do to help them out. Work as a unit, a collective. That's what they fear. They, don't, they fear you getting together and sharing the knowledge and becoming a collective, a genuinely united kingdom. Right, rather than a corporate United Kingdom. I mean, a genuine people that are there. Once you get that collective going, and you can see it, it's happening now. These calls are happening and people getting together. So it's a very positive thing. Um, but if we just gave templates and you just start writing templates without understanding at least some of what we've talked about today as the first call, then we're just getting you into trouble. And then people are going to be knocking on your door and you're going to be calling us going, the bailiffs are here, the police, what, what do we do? What do I do, yeah. Well, that's Absolutely. really uncomfortable. But it's uncomfortable when you know what you're doing. Let's not pretend you're not heroes here. Your adrenaline goes, the anxiety kicks in. They're parts of the emotion of being a human being. But mm. you start to control those triggers and emotions and indicators. They do not throw you around like a voodoo doll anymore. That's the difference. You still experience that stuff. But the experience is different. You're now in control of it because you've become sovereign. And that's why the philosophy bit, or, you know, just think of it as fight psychology or, you know, psychological warfare, you know, not necessarily philosophy, but it's the, it's the mentality that you go into that ring with that's going to make a difference to the outcome. That's really what we're trying to get across today. You know, and if that's too, if that's too shallow and it's not, not deep enough, then it's going to be well then maybe people aren't ready maybe people aren't ready yet if they find it too shallow that that's a thing because we're all evolving at different times but also can i just say here there are a lot of um people that have uh, have i don't know not the knowledge or they've done their homework with common law sovereignty etc and they are offering packages to help people you know they're saying for a short a small fee we can do this for you we can do that for you what are are your views on that because i i do know a few people that have paid up up front and have got into trouble should we just go to, to, to Dean first and then uh, to, to Souk? Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I, I've got a big issue with um, people asking for money for freedom. So I'll, I'll just give you an example. Is that 
the example could be that for a hundred pounds you reach this level of freedom but for 200 pounds you can be that little bit more free and for 300 pounds you can be even more free than the first two and so on and so forth now i believe that freedom isn't for sale at all for any price so those that are asking for money just be mindful about what it is that you're doing i'm not saying don't i'm not saying do i'm just saying be mindful and my own opinion is freedom is not for sale for any price Sue. Yeah, absolutely no, thank you so there are a number of people charging for stuff out there and there's a number of things firstly is you do not pay for anything up front Okay, if people claim that they can get your loans back and your mortgages back, then you're much better off paying them a larger fee when they get you the result rather than paying them up front. Okay, you've got to, got to learn to identify a scam when you see one. Okay, nobody has successfully got mortgages back in a rinse repeat process that they could be charging you for it. Even in the legal world, in America, there's something called Sarbanes-Oxley legislation, which means you can't sell something, you can't deliver, right? And that's, in, that's even in that level. Mm. So it's insanity. And absolutely what Dean said, to charge people in order to free them is perverse, mm. okay? And it creates a gate. It's like a gatekeeper type scenario where you're saying, well, if you can't make that payroll, we won't set you free. Well, the people that need it most probably can't afford the money. So why are you charging for it? And if you've got all that knowledge, then you should be in a contempt place. You should be in an abundant place. So again, why are you charging people for it? There are so many red flags and indicators from basic material transactional level right the way to a consciousness and spiritual level that paying for that stuff is wrong. Now, if someone has helped you and you agree an energy exchange to donate some money to them, to help them that they keep going that's different if you have an agreement but people who are charging you up front for stuff like that for me that's an absolute no-no it's a huge red flag okay people asking you to sign up for memberships in order to join a club so that you can get all the freedom you know at the end of the day you don't need that you're part of a club already that's the bit that people are missing once they understand that like people say when you start to build those natural communities together you have to sign a bit of paper to be part of those communities the energy and spirit is there and then as the nation starts to get to that critical mass that energy will come along and then yeah. you'll see the trend the transition is happening now but it will happen more quickly um i've just got to look to the comment here nelly on the land says people don't respect advice that's free <laughs> what would you say to that i mean i think a well, lot of people don't respect all sorts of things that are free but those those people who don't respect the information because it's being paid for because it's free, they haven't made the journey. Right. Right. So for those people, they're looking for, they're not looking for love, they're looking for a prostitute. But then you need to go to the prostitute zone. You don't need to go to look for a wife in the wife zone. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, but... Sorry, <laughs> you, you were laughing at that. I thought well, I, I just love cut, the analogy. I cut to you. <laughs> Oh, I just love, I love his analogies. And because he just talks so much bloody sense, don't you, Sook? You all do, guys. It's amazing. Well, for you to determine where to go. So we've got, we've got half an hour, just under 25 minutes or so um, left of the show. It's been fascinating to um, go down this um, pathway because, uh, as we said earlier, we've got some more of these to do. Mm -hmm. But there is this journey then, it seems, that we've all got to take. How, and, and somebody said, what's the, what's the, how do we make that journey? How do we get on that footing so that we are then empowered to be able to not have to go to um, others and ask, you know, what do I do? And when the bailiffs turn up or when this red demand comes with boxes all over, the, I don't know why I'm mm -hmm. looking at that camera, there we are. Um, what, what do I do? How do we, how do we start that process big question big question any any of our our gurus out there yes souk no oh, just really the first part of life is you must enjoy it so if you're in a position at the moment where you're not enjoying your life just start enjoying it first because 
you have to come from a place of positivity. Sovereignty is a positive experience. It shouldn't be an anxious journey. So just start reconnecting with yourself, with the things you enjoy doing. If you, you know, and then start to go on a journey of listening and watching the, the certain videos, documentaries, and just educate yourself. There's an important difference between people who are nescient and people who are ignorant. People who are ignorant are aware of something and have chosen to ignore it. That's why ignorance is no defense in the court of law. Nescience is when you genuinely are clueless about something and you're unaware of it. Nescience causes fear because it's the unknown. So the first mm -hmm. thing to do is remove the nescience. So obviously watching some of the, 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 the interviews that Richard Vogue has done on the shows, looking at uh, the other research that those individuals have done on their websites. As you start to read more, you'll get confident. At the moment, you got, you know, a guy in a cap, a guy in a hat, and a guy sat, actually, I'm not sure, <laughs> Mark Warehouse in London, I don't want to mess with it. <laughs> <laughs> it I'm giving, you, uh, giving you advice online, but look, why should you believe any of us? I've done a lot of reading and stuff in the background, and as has Pete, as has Dean, and our confidence hasn't come from talking to each other. It came from the reading we did. We then yeah. built further confidence by talking to each other and realizing all the different independent sources that we'd read were essentially coming to the same ultimate conclusions and the same strategies in the same direction. Mm. And it's through that journey that you have to do it. So it's, it's not a shortcut, but it is enjoyable if you take it start off as an educational process. Don't worry about having the fight. First, just build the knowledge. Just understand the game. And then yeah. once you've understood the game, then decide what you want to do. It might just be you train other people in it and you don't take the fight on your at all. There will be a role for you depending on your individual strengths. Whatever your individual strengths are, that's what you've got to look at. And then once you've got the knowledge, you've got to think, how can I use those strengths to leverage this knowledge and get it out there? Yeah, that, and that to me makes a lot of, a a lot lot of sense. sense. Uh, because, I, I mean, I've been in a fortunate position, of course, running the channel, mm. um, meeting so many interesting people, and each one's given me a different piece of the jigsaw. Sometimes you're looking at one piece that you've had an interview with and you think that's really interesting. And then somebody gives you another one and you go, that's really interesting too, but I can't see how they join because the person I've yet to meet mm. has got the middle piece which joins the two together, or the Very three good. together. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, and, and I f thoroughly enjoyed it. But some days you are, it's like everyone's got a slight different approach to it. And so that's where it's confusing. But I think this has been a really, really... I, I think it has. And, and I think also something that needs to be mentioned is fear. Because I think so many of us are living in fear, especially what's gone on over the last few years. They, they put us in fear. And once you can remove the fear, I mean, the only thing to really be frightened of is fear itself, isn't it? Because why are we frightened? Are we frightened of dying? When you're frightened of dying, then you are going to be living in fear. And because we're all going to go some at some stage. And I think it comes from a place of love. If, if you know, love to me is the opposite to fear. And I think when you're working from a place of love, unconditional love, really, this is all heart based stuff not just filling in a form and sending it off and hoping. Mm. Um, it's got to come from the heart and that cannot be taught. You know, you, you have to do the work. And I think if, if, if the guys on the panel can maybe give us, I know you already have kind of alluded to it, but if these people that are watching the show would say, well, where do I start? What would you say? Pete said meditation. I mean, what, what, what other things could you suggest for people to do, which they're not expecting on this show, they're expecting to be able to fill in a form and send it off and you know, get get um, get out of paying council tax. What what would you suggest, guys? A lot of a lot of the time, my experience has been that uh, people who are doing a lot of fear bailiffs turn up and so on and so forth, and they always seem overwhelmingly confident. But if a lot of the times you're looking at a, at a bailiff, there's a lot of fear that they're doing as well. They're afraid that they're not going to be able to get what they need, what they need to get done, and so they're in fear as well. So that that creates a lot of conflict, a lot of emotional distress. So you have to be able to calm yourself. You have to be able to let go. And, and it, it quite rightly says it. It becomes like um, a game of uh, you, you're just enjoying it. You really are just it's like playing. You go out to play. Oh, what are you going to say? Because we've got this knowledge, I suppose, and, and we're empowered by it. We don't have fear. I mean, we, we don't, I don't know what I'm going to say because I don't know mm. what they're going to say. I don't know how they're going to behave. I have to respond in that moment. But I'm confident enough in what I know not to worry about what that may or may not be because I'll know I'll know what to say when the time comes. And because I, I have that, 
when the time comes, I know what to say. If you want to know where to start, meditation is, is a great place to start. But the, the, you, you've got to um, manage your emotions, right? You've got to get to a place where your button gets pushed, but instead of reacting, you're like, oh, hang on, what does that mean? And can I do something about it other than react? Do you see so what could I mean? You, I mean, um, here's a, um, a slightly odd take on all of this being an odd man can't, can't wait to where, hear this. <laughs> where i am um there used to be a, a pub that used to be a nightclub outside and when the kids were small this room was a, a bedroom um and sometimes you'd get couples coming out late at night three in the morning having been to the nightclub and they would argue and one particular night my my ex-wife at the time she just walked out because they were standing outside keeping it she walked out to this raging row and just now I couldn't have done it being a bloke, but she could do it being a mother and just said, look, do you mind? I've got my children up there. Could you just move along and do your argument? But, <laughs> but by the very fact that she came in, it quelled that whole conversation that they had and, and it calmed them down and they did move on. And I just wondered, this is the facetious, this is the sort of comedy aspect with me is when you've got these people banging up the door. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest inviting them in, but could you sort of come out there with a tray of tea and biscuits and say, look, OK, let's just sit down and have a chat about this humanely mm. instead yeah. of having an argument and and kind of doing, doing the unexpected, because presumably these guys are expecting you yeah, to be very resistant, to be angry or to break down and c cry. But if you sort of come out and go, oh, I'm so pleased. I've got this packet of biscuits. I really wanted to share it or this cake. Come and have a sit. And you put it out in the front garden and you say, sit down. Would Is that stupid? I mean, you, yes. you, is that stupid? It's like sending, you know, my old, old toys. Is that a silly thing to do? I think that's a great strategy, and uh, I think you should film it when you do it, Richard. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> can I just say on, on that basis, though, when when I when they came to take my car the other day because I hadn't paid a parking um, notice request invoice, which I'd forgotten about, and and when they turned out, they they I wasn't there. They left the little red letter, mm. and saying we're going to come and take your belongings or your property to the value of three hundred ninety-six quid, and I was horrified because I thought what. What? I didn't even remember it. So um, that's when I, I spoke to you. I put it on our little group and then I spoke to Sook and he said, you you know, choose your battles. So I phoned Mr. Waite, Mr. G. Waite, who lives in Kent. And, um, I'm glad it wasn't T. Waite, as in Terry Waite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you might wait five years for it. <laughs> yeah, into exactly. it. Anyway, I've been interviewed um, him, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Chuck it in. But Mr. Lovely. Waite... He, he was very, let's say, assertive to start with in the conversation. And then I put, I paid the money. And then um, as I was on the phone to him and he said, oh, your money's just come through. And he, we started having a nice conversation because well, I, I, I came... Well, he would with, then. You well, paid him, you? But, yes. But, but prior to that, but he was very, like, I, I don't want to say aggressive, but he had his defence up, yes. you know, because he was saying, well, it's nothing to do with me. I'm just doing my job. I'm the debt collector. You haven't paid. It's something to do with the court in Northampton. Ha ha. Oh, the office yeah. in Northampton. And I, I said, look, I genuinely don't know what this is for. And he said, it's a, it's a parking fine from like two, 2021, three or four years ago. And I couldn't remember it. So then um, he, I said, well, I, I dispute it because the, the machine didn't work. And he said, well, you need to take it up with the, with the court. Don't go back to the council. And I said, well, how do I do that? And he started Googling for me and giving me phone numbers and being very nice. And uh, which I thought was kind of strange. So because you can win these people over, OK, he had got the money, so he had won as such. But I then phoned him up afterwards, later, and I said, look, I'd really like to chat with you on my little channel because I think you've got a very interesting job. And, and I've been on the other side of, 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 you know, I've had to ask a bailiff actually to remove a tenant from a property who'd been living in my flat for, six, uh, for, for 12 months and hadn't paid rent. And then fiddled around the electricity and everything. So it took me 12 months to get the bailiff or the debt collector to come along. And they did actually remove this this tenant. So talking to Mr. Way, I'm saying, you know, I, I think you do have a, a, a purpose in certain situations. But the whole point, I have dragged on this, this conversation. The purpose of me saying this is, I think, like you're saying, either taking a bit of cake, give them, you know, say a few jokes or whatever, or just have a conversation with them to 
see that they are human as well and maybe win them over because they don't know what they're doing half the time. They, so they, I'm going to go to Sue yeah, so, in yeah, a sec, but, some, yeah. but just before we do, we've got 15 minutes left and yeah. it would be nice to get some questions from yeah, the audience because yeah, yeah. we've been adding questions. We and, have, we and have. And I feel it's a bit unfair on yes. the audience, although we've we've had a, a we fantastic a conversation. Yeah. But uh, yes, yeah, Sue, if you can be uh, brief and then we'll take some questions. And audience, if you can put your questions now with the word question, don't make them too complex or l expect Simple, lengthy yeah. answers. Sue. Yeah, sure. Look, just really quickly, it's an important point. Not, the vast majority of people, 99.99% of people, are really good people stuck in a corrupt system trying to make ends meet. And it's really important that we remember that when we're engaging with people. It's not them and us. It's lots of people stuck in a real crap situation. Yeah. And what we're trying to do is find the most efficient, peaceful way of unlocking it. Right. And so it's always going to start by putting the olive branch out and trying to talk to people that is there. But don't you know? be prepared and don't be disappointed and feel rejected if you get a complete narcissist on the other side of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Equally, yeah. don't be really surprised if you get someone that's human being, because it's a whole mishmash of people out there. And if you just treat everyone as though there's some sort of satanic enemy, that, that's going to become a cropper as well, to be honest with you. So. You know, it is important that we remember that most people are good people stuck in a crop system, even if they're in uniform. Brilliant. Um, thank you very much for that. Well, we're, we're coming to the close, but before we come to that close, we we will manage to get some of your questions in. But I think it's been worth doing, um, going uh, getting that philosophy as, as a bit of a groundwork yeah. for us. So, uh, Karen, what have well, we Well, this one's going on about the vehicles. I, I, the, the, the certificate of ownership again we we've already um answered that so if yeah. this is going out as, as a recorded show people can get those answers somebody keeps saying how do we know how bad the family court is i mean yes that's, yes that, that's yeah yes yeah, how, how bad is the family court suit oh really bad i about and by family, ago, I was involved with a child that was involved in it. i had that child in the back of my car taking them from one place to another in protective and when that child got passed to the mother, uh, 20 minutes later, I got a phone call from someone that was with him. And the child had been taken off the mother at gunpoint. Oh, crikey. Right, they were little children and they smashed the windows through to get some. The, they, there is nothing family about those courts. There's nothing justice about them. I'll even go as far out as saying over the next 12 to 24 months, you will start to realise how involved the government are in human trafficking and how much of a part the family courts play in that. Right. And and, and Dean said at, right at the beginning, um, I, I think it was Dean, don't get to court to begin with. Yes. Um, no. So if you can... It, that was Pete. Oh, that was oh. Pete. Oh, yeah, beg your pardon. Sorry, sorry, Dean. Um, misappropriating. Oh, yeah, because actually Dean has been to court to prove yeah, yeah a yeah. situation. So, um, uh, right. Another question. How do we get off the electoral roll? Don't go on it in the first place. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> <laughs> we did discuss this before, yeah. didn't we, about where you live. But if you're on it... Yeah, if you're on it, you've got to be... What's your name? Figgly... Figgly, yes. Or something Figgly, or other. Figgly dots. Sorry, I, I didn't actually manage to sort of work out the spelling, so now I can't mispronounce it. My memory's a bit... I'll have to think of a... Think, think of another one. Think of another name. Is, is there a way of getting off it once you're on? I'm sure there's well, a process. It, every so often, doesn't it? Well, they ask you to... Yeah, they do. That's to vote, isn't it? They send you a form which you can fill in how many people live in your house. Well, they yeah, do, so the do the census. The census, yeah. Oh, isn't yeah. that the same way? That's that's the way. The census, yes. Yeah, so you just don't fill it in. Correct. Which is illegal. Don't fill don't in the fill form. Don't fill it in. Yes, yeah, so I've moved. Because presum yes, presumably people move around, don't they? They don't stay like me in the same place for no, they 30 move. or bloody years. Or you years. could say, yeah, you could just not fill it in next time. Um, what is Civil National Business Centre? I don't know where that one came from. Have we talked about that? Oh, it's a corporation. It's a corporation. All oh, right, so Thanks, you must Pete. have mentioned that. Okay. Um, cool. What other quickly questions? Can I make a suggestion? No. Um, <laughs> well, there is no suggestion. Just, yeah. Yeah, just questions in the last 10 minutes, <laughs> really. Yeah. Um, question Do we need to get our live birth uh, born document and where from? Do we I've need to get an, that? I've got an answer for that. Oh, well done. Okay. Okay, so um, if you were in court and somebody had committed murder with a gun, do you think the evidence that they would show to the jury would be a certificate? Or do you think the evidence that they would show to the jury would be the gun itself? 
<laughs> it's a brilliant answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be the gun. I mean, I'm just, you know, guessing on this one. <laughs> um, Julia's just very kindly reminded you of your name, the lovely Julia, your figgle fob. Oh, figgle fob. Thank you very much. She should know, you see. She, she is know. my partner, of, um, after all. <laughs> what else? Question. What of loose... Oh, what of, oh, hang on, they're coming to me. Would a £500 logbook loan stop the removal of a car van? Car or van? A, what, Would a £500 logbook loan... A logbook loan. Yeah, a logbook loan. A logbook yeah, comes so with the car, doesn't it? What they're saying essentially is that the car no longer, you're no longer the owner of the car. So if someone comes to get it, because there's outstanding charge on the car, logbook oh. loan, a loan against the logbook, oh, that they see. can't take it. Yeah, I think that, I don't think that's a legal term, but that's how I've interpreted that. The others might have a slightly different. You know, on the uh, here's a question. I just I just get my own question in here very quickly. Um, you, you know, um, on the form on the V5 form, and there it says you know get, change your um, correct your name or change the name if it's down wrong or whatever. Um, could you just make up a name? Could you sort of go oh from now on I'm Figgly Fog, you know, and 25 Acacia Avenue in case you're passing, and 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 would they just change that? Do you need to... D Dean? Yeah. Uh... Do not lie at all, ever, because that is a crime. But what you could do is you could make up a trust. Right. But I mean, if somebody, I mean, if, if, if you've got a, if you, but if you've got a, a, um, a nickname that you do go by, you know, people call me Vobesy and I just go, oh, I'm just going to make the van Vobesy. in the name Vobesy. Yeah. Is that, is, could I not do that? And it wouldn't be lying necessarily. No, but Vobes, Vobes is still your known name. So I've got a slightly different view on that. So if you use the Constitution um, and you stand under Article 61, you are completely and lawfully entitled, in fact, applauded by the realm, to peacefully and lawfully obstruct the Crown and its agents. It is quite peaceful and lawful to put any name you want on the V5C, and it is not fraudulent or criminal at all. You can put your pet's name down on if you like, even normally. Mm -hmm. The problem you'll have is where, if and when the car gets taken into a pound, at that point, the name oh, of the V5C to. needs to match the name of the one getting it. So there are, and I've done it. Right? I've done all that stuff, and I've, I've played with that with the, with the cars and stuff. Okay, you can do it. Now, that is the power of the Constitution. It's under Article 61, and it's important that people understand that. Once you stand under it, you are completely entitled to play games and troll the system and hack the system as much as you want, as long as you don't cause anyone else any loss, harm or injury. Okay, so it's quite reasonable that you can do that. I do it all the time. I play silly buggers with them, with the V5C name on the documents and that all the time. And it's quite lawful and it's quite reasonable and it's quite honourable because you're dealing with a corrupt system. And so it's quite reasonable to use um, made up, make your own legal fiction up. Use your dead granny. Right? If they can create legal fictions, you can create them. Troll them and play with it. But make sure you understand that you are lawfully entitled to do it and that you understand that Article 61 says that when the government becomes tyrannical, it is the people's duty to stand up lawfully and peacefully and obstruct them at every opportunity. And somebody on the vehicle um, uh, conversation says you can put your vehicle in a business name and set it up as a, as a limited company, so that could work. For a lot yep. of people, probably. Yeah. Um, and some other questions. Somebody says uh, we need to search for solutions rather than focus on problems. That's not a question. That's a statement. Thank that you. That coming up. It's very nice. Very, very good one. Um, and um, somebody wants to know some good sources and resources. And then they've said David Edelman has a website with a lot of information. And David's joining us next week. But can you guys recommend any any sources or resources? Uh. No. <laughs> Great. Okay. I'm moving that, that on. It's uh... a really open question, though, I suppose. It depends it is, on yeah. So the first thing I would say is the, uh, the book Democracy Defined um, and then the commonlawconstitution.com website, which we'll keep put together. That writes things down in Fisher-Price terms. Um, yeah, yeah there's, there's also, I'd, I'd recommend a website called the Justinian Deception, which is Roman. Oh, yeah. Uh, that would be on my list. Fabulous. Um, we have uh, about uh, five minutes left 
so uh, let's just get cracking through the question. Somebody oh. somebody said, finally, some uh, <laughs> lawful rebellion okay, stuff. Uh, so was... question here, has anyone known of Baron David Ward affidavit? Ah, uh, yes, this is a, a, a famous affidavit, isn't it? Yes. Uh, is that the answer to that question? That is, yes. <laughs> somebody knows of it, so... <laughs> um, yeah. oh, I'm looking for the word question first. Should I... Okay, question. Should I send a notice to a judge in a court of protection case as I've corrected my status and standing? Involving what? Yeah, it's probably something, I don't know, yeah, it's a bit more detailed. Yeah, I was going to say that's too... Yeah, they're, they're going, yeah specific questions, We would they, need really? more information there, pr yes, presumably. Yes, yeah. so whoever... So, they've, they've but uh, the give us a bit more information next time. Yes. Um, and, and maybe one of the panellists can... You know, and none of this is legal advice, by the way. I suppose we should have said that at the did beginning. Did we not? I uh, thought we did actually. Did we... Well, you said it maybe in your in your. In my, yeah, thing. this is all just entertainment, ladies, yes. which is why I throw in the jokes. So if, if we all this end up in, in the dock, not that we would be in the dock. No, 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 we won't. Sovereign Project. Yes. That's a, that's a good um, um, resource. I think so. Is that is that another Pete? Is that Pete? Somebody Pete Stone? Is that? I think it Sovereign, is. Yeah. Sovereign Project. There's a lot. Sovereign, there's a... The Sovereign, sorry, the Sovereign Project dot live. Thank you, Dot Live. He's just sent out a little film, actually, which is really, really good. It just came my way the other day, just a, a mini video of how to do things, you know, and saying no and not complying. So, yeah, go, go on to that um, website. What other questions? Question, you missed my query. I'm sorry. Um, can you trademark your name? Yeah. That's from Guy Fawkes. Really. You can. Yeah. Is there benefit in that? Yeah, some people do that. There's people that are using that effectively and, and uh, sending bills back when they use them and stuff. Yeah, there's a, if you go in, there's a, I can't know off the top of my head, there's a blog, it's WordPress Awaken GB. If you search for that, you should get it. It's say, got a say, picture of Neo from the Matrix on it. Okay, just say that again, because it, just say, could you just say that again, because it was um, just breaking up as you said it. Yeah, sure. There's um, there's someone's put a WordPress blog together. There's a really good resource pool, and it explains to you uh, fully the limited company process, the trademark process, vulnerability persons, and all of that. And I'll just give you the. Um, I'll send you the link, Richard, if you can put it in maybe the description or something. Yeah, sure. And that that expl that goes through all of these questions in detail, and they've written they've actually done it. Right, so they've written these documents off the back of doing it and successfully protecting their assets, and I won't say who they are for obvious reasons. Right, but the, the anonymous blog is there, and you can go and have a look at it, and that will have the detail on. Okay. One, 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 one last it? question. Yep, I think um, we're just about okay, time. Okay, so if you change your name by Depol, how does that affect your your uh, status as in fiction? Your your stats as a fiction. So can I do, so do you have to change your name by depot or but if you do change it by depot, which presumably is in their system, it yeah. just it, you no longer are your birth certificate. Is that what that I means? Am. Yeah. Um. So you would be simply changing your bank accounts. That's all that is. You still got an account with the government. They can still bill you. That's all that it is. Right. So you're still in their system effectively. Yeah, and giving jurisdiction. Yeah, for that for that fictional entity. For, for that new, yeah, because I guess at the end of the day, what we're talking about is a, is a name, is not a is not a spiritual being with flesh and blood. It's just a concept. Let me ask you this name. Let me uh, sorry. Let me ask you this question, Richard. Yes, when please do. You, when you move your mouth and tongue and use phonetics. Yes. How is that imprinting on a piece of paper with ink? Well, uh, very cleverly, I happen to have a, a pen just attached to my tongue. And, 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 and. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Sorry. It's not. It's not. So it's just phonetics. Yes. So something that is made up on a piece of paper and in ink is fiction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And I think slowly, yes. slowly people are, I mean, you know, people, people coming to this for the first time, that's a huge leap of faith, isn't it? Yeah. But once you've got that idea that you are not the name, that you are something yeah. separate from it. That's massive. Th that's the, the really the very much the first step. Uh, unfortunately, we've, we've run out of time and I don't want to go over because, you know, these yeah. things can. We're trying to stay as yeah. professional as we can. Um, <laughs> Good luck. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, you see now, crap, the the, uh, the on-screen editing is... 
But uh, can I just say a, a big, big thank you to our panellists for coming on and bearing with us and all the questions. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here and to have your... Um, your knowledge and your thoughts on all of this. As we say, it's not legal advice. We, we only say that for YouTube and all these other people. Um, and uh, it's also been an absolute pleasure to have you, the audience, tuning in and bearing with the mm. technical issues. Um, not that there have been actually too many technical issues. Uh, no, it, not really, considering. No. Um, just the, the presenter here is a bit... And, and it, yeah, but, his mate on the... <laughs> and, and a big thank you to Karen for setting this up and organising it. Absolute pleasure. It. Absolute pleasure, really. Enjoyed it. Um, yeah, and next week, can I say who we've got? Yeah, of course. So we have do. got Andy Barlow next week. We've got David Edelman, whose name's been um, popped up a couple of times, and Mick Stott. And then we're going to be the following week and the following week. So we're doing four of these, aren't we? And these gents hopefully will join us on another panel if they're happy to come back. Are you happy to come back? If sure. the people want to hear us, I'm sure we'll come back. I think they want to hear you. I think <laughs> yeah, it's been amazing. Fine. Yeah. And uh, just before we go, then, ha has it been of any use to you the, as panellists? Uh, has it been interesting or have you found this the most tedious two hours of your life? Well, you, can always, they, you can lie. You can lie. They've gone. <laughs> yeah, they've disappeared. <laughs> so, so to clarify one's own thinking and to get the perspective of someone else who uh, is sovereign. So, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, definitely. It's been very useful. And look, the biggest thing is now we're having the discussion. That's yeah. the most important thing. The knowledge is spreading through having the discussion and the discourse and the debate for people to challenge. Everyone challenge us what we're telling you. You know, we need to be challenged. You need to be challenged. That's how, you know, we knock the carbon out of the steel and make it strong. So, you know, we don't want yes men everywhere. That's the most dangerous thing we can do in this environment is be surrounded by people who just nod. We want people that challenge us. So when we go out there, the fight becomes easier. Yeah, so train Dean. hard, fight easy. So no, it's been brilliant. Thank you, sir. And so, Dean? so to add one, just for the last uh, question, uh, there was a question earlier on about getting people together. Uh, I believe this, this is a step to get people together. Absolutely, yeah. We, we oh, are, it is. Sorry, yes, I was waiting for you to. Yes. Absolutely, it is a uh, definitely. And I was going to say something about that, but it's totally. Um, yes, okay. I was. Uh, we were asked earlier. Um, from Eli in Bristol actually from the Shine Seminars how can people contact us and I think at the moment we don't really want to be contacted I don't think you guys do because you would be inundated and I don't think Richard you, you don't want people to sort of block up your email no I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm actually no. not um, here yeah, so, so, and, and I'm going as well so <laughs> I think wait till the end of the end of March when we do the, our last one and then we, we we might be able to do something I don't, I don't know but the main thing is really it's not just about sending 10 plates or letters or, or you know um, quick fixes yeah, i think we've yeah it's yeah not the... it's not about that um so just tune in each week and and then sort of grow with us in um learning to be sovereign yourself and if that makes sense so we're not giving any email addresses out at this stage because it really we, we, there's not there's no purpose yeah. to be honest yeah so there we are ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for bearing with us it's been a fantastic two hours thank you for watching thanks to the panel thanks to karen and um Thank you. Thank Until you. next time, <laughs> take <laughs> thanks. care. Thanks to you, Richard, as well. Oh, yeah, thanks. Oh, for... one very last question. Somebody oh. said, when are you next speaking or where are you next speaking? That is a good question. He doesn't and, know uh, you. Next I, week? I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you're watching this on the Friday night, I have a very interesting guest coming uh, on s tomorrow, um, be out in the afternoon, a chap who is uh, challenging, um, and you may have seen the videos, a chap who is challenging government on all sorts of aspects. He's an ex-policeman and he's on the run. He's being traced and tracked. Um, I can't tell you more than that and it'll be out tomorrow afternoon, assuming they haven't got to him. But that's it from us. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, from Karen and I and Good the night.